Joining me today is Robert Amadeo. He's the head of municipals over at Western Asset Management. Um, as Guy was mentioning, Treasury yields are rising. Rates are starting uh, to rise a little bit as well in munis. Does the sell-off feel orderly, or is there something bigger going on? No, there's nothing bigger going on. In fact, the biggest story is the stability and the fundamentals in the broader marketplace perhaps are being overlooked just with the rates moving higher in the U.S. Treasury market, and that's spilling over into the broader municipal bond market. But there's no fundamental justification for selling municipal bonds. The broader economy is in very good shape. The labor economy, you know, the labor market is doing well. Uh, tax receipts are coming in stable. The spending proposals at state and local level are good. Always pockets of weakness, no doubt, but broadly strong fundamentals are leading to a good investment landscape. We talk a lot about some of the ETFs. We had a story this week about uh, BlackRock and Vanguard, and they're posting some of the biggest outflows that they've mm -hmm. had really in the history of these ETFs for the muni space. How concerned are we about the supply and demand technicals? As we know, in the market, that could drive really the whole story. Sometimes. Sure, sure. In technicals, you have to pay close attention to the technicals in a municipal bond market because sometimes when the technicals are driving these negative demand cycles, it's very difficult to break. And that's when a firm like West and we'll really look to the fundamentals and what it, to the, the prices and look to see if the prices have been discounted beyond the fundamentals. And if we start to see a steeper curve, uh, cheaper credit spreads, and just generally higher ratios and higher yields, we'll look for that as a catalyst to add risk to our portfolios. So talk to me about some of the ways that you're adding risk, because that's an interesting trade, because some people have said that with yields rising, they want to back off, maybe get a little bit defensive. So where are you adding some risk? Yeah, so first of all, portfolios are tactically, we're in a position to add risk to our portfolios. We're in, we're in good shape in most of our portfolios. Slightly less, less rate risk and, and modest amount. We're not in a bunker in terms of credit risk, but we have a modest amount of rate risk and certainly enough budget to add to it. You know, I'd say the types of securities, it's not always about just a particular name or credit, but for example, a floating rate security, which may have a maturity that's beyond, say, five or even 10 years, and that could even go as long as 30. So you have some spread risk attached to that, and that's consistent with our outlook for stable fundamentals. Yet the coupon will float with short-term borrowing rates. And consistent with our view for a flatter curve ahead, that security should not only con it will continue to perform well as it has over the last six months. Yeah, I like that trade. Uh, coming up quickly as well, just the midterm elections. Mm -hmm. How do you price in any political risk if there is more stalemate uh, or infrastructure? You know, How do you price that in? Sure. Well, infrastructure is another year of disappointment. This was supposed to be the year of infrastructure. And and, you know, we've looked to uh, the marketplace for investment opportunities, and, and really it's not something much interesting coming out of there. So we're hopeful that more investment opportunities come out of the infrastructure-related investments in our marketplace. However, with the new policy uh, makers likely to head to Washington, D.C., I think investors will have time. It'll take time for them to get there, introduce legislation, and then get it passed. So investors will have time to adapt to new information as it becomes available.